Hello and welcome back to our plane based target shooting gallery tutorial. In the last video we added some random uh, values to our targets to adjust their position on the x, y and z axis accordingly. So every time I tap they will change position. There's a few extra things we're going to need to just do, like actually have it so when we hit the targets uh, they disappear and it tells us up here which one's been hit before we uh, can even start looking at adding a skull system in the future. Okay, so I'm just going. What we're going to do first is uh, just a simple little addition, just to make this a bit more complicated. And to do that, we're just going to go to Add Asset and Import from AR Library, and we're going to look for a random rotation group. So this is a uh, ready available patch already on the Spark AR Assets um, Library. I'm just going to import that into our project. And what this will do is, if I drag this into my patch editor, this will just every so often randomly rotate um, whatever we hook up to it, essentially. So what we're going to do with this is the reason we're going to do this is we're going to have it so the targets don't just go up and down and rotate on their own positions and randomly reset every time the game's reset. We actually want them to move around the user every so often just to make it a bit more challenging. So I'm going to drag from the random rotation output and add an unpack. So we need to take the values here and extract them into our X, Y, and Z values. So we have our three values here because we only want to deal with the Y rotation. And then going to add a pack. So we repackage them and we just want to hook the Y up to the second input on the pack. So X, Y, and Z if you remember from the last video. We're going to go to our targets controller, hit the little arrow next to rotation and hook this up like so. So now if I just tap, you'll see that these are now randomly rotating around. They're a bit on the strong side at the moment. That's because our duration is fairly high, so I'm just going to change it to be 5. And I'm also going to increase my dampening by 400. And I'm just going to reduce its angle to about 90, just so it's again not too crazy. So now you'll see that they have a bit of movement to them. So they will ever so often randomly start rotating around just to make it a bit more challenging to the user so they can't just uh, blitz through this uh, too much. And again, we can always adjust these values, adjust the dampening, the duration and the angle as you see fit. And the reason it's uh, sort of giving me a time up so quickly is if you remember from uh, a few videos back, we uh, set the timer here to be 5 rather than the number of frames, which is actually would be about 18. So if I was to reset this to 18, which is actually how long it should be, you'll see that this is now working uh, like so. And these targets do disappear because of this target's controller visibility linked to the equals exactly from the countdown. And all this will be available in the description down below with links on how to get all this stuff. Okay, so now we have a bit more random movement in there. We're now going to actually want to tell our scene when we've hit these targets. So I'm just going to uh, zoom out a little bit. And the reason now, if you remember, we, each of these targets here are set as an object and they're all a child of this target's controller. So each of these here can be individually controlled still. So I'm going to select my first target. I'm going to go to Interactions, Patch and Create. I'm just going to create an object tap. And I'm just going to move this down here out of the way a little bit, just so it's not uh, not uh, sort of in our way as we do this. So what we're going to do is every time when we hit this target here, we want this to toggle the visibility of these targets up here to see whether it's been hit or not. This could also be linked to a sound player or to a particle system to make that visible or start playing when this is hit. Um, for the time being, we're just using the most basic setup, which is making a rectangle appear or disappear to show whether it's been hit or not. So when this uh, target is hit, I'm going to click and drag and add a switch. So every time this target is hit, I want this to turn off my switch. Because I want this to uh, turn off a rectangle rather than turn the rectangle on. And I'm going to go over here to where we've got our target hit and not hit uh, value. So I'm going to go to 
this one here. So target not hit, get the visibility for that. Uh, and target one hit, and get the visibility for that as well. And then we're going to go to our target one and also get its visibility. So everything that's associated, so everything that we renamed to target one should all be uh, here. We're going to also want to add a not patch and want to hit our not patch to our target one hit rectangle. So this by default um, is on and the other two should be off. And then just hook all these up to my switch. Like so. So it should look like this. Uh, at the moment, um, all these are staying like in this state here. So you notice that the uh, target is actually currently set to be off. So I need to actually enable it. And I only want the target to be visible or enabled when our screen tap is triggered. So I'm going to click and drag from my screen tap to my switch, uh, switch is turn on. So now every time this is turned on, it's going to make the target appear and make the, not, uh, the uh, visibility of the being hit turn off to show that it's not been hit yet. Uh, once it, that target has been hit, uh, once I can uh, identify which one it is, At the moment, it's a little bit uh, buggy because we need to do something uh, to fix this. There we go. So every time it's hit, you'll notice that the target fills up. Uh, we'll, it will work a bit better once we've got all the targets uh, linked up and also before when we add in our double checker here so it doesn't um, just reset every time I hit tap. Because at the moment, every time I shoot something, it will just reset. We do need to add something in there afterwards and we'll do that at the very end. I'm going to go to my next target and again go to interactions, create patch, target, uh, object tap. And we're just going to duplicate the same setup. So again, another switch. We're now going to go to target two and add the visibility for those rectangles. And we're going to go to our second target and also get its visibility values. And again, we're setting this up exactly the same as the what we've just done. But this time it only uh, trigger when the second target is hit. So let's just uh, range this up and link all these up like so. Making sure that our object tap is linked to the turn off on the switch and our screen tap is linked to the turn on on the switch. And we're just going to do this one more time for the final target. Add another switch, making sure that this is linked to turn off, making sure that our screen tap is linked to the turn on, and then selecting our final three objects, visibilities, and setting these up exactly again, the same as we've just done twice before. So every time a target is hit, that target will disappear and it will toggle the visibility of our rectangle for the lack of a score system at this point in time. There we go. So now whenever I hit one of these, it should Show us the target being hit. We're having a bit of a, uh, still having a bit of a glitch at the moment because, like I said, we need to fix the detection a bit. So we're just going to do that now before uh, we go any further. So now we have all of our targets hit, and when we hit them, it should change the icon up here, and the target should also disappear from our scene. Uh, we need to tell Spark to only detect our, um, or only reset everything when we double tap, not when we single tap. Because if we just do it every time we single tap, we're going to keep having this issue where if we miss something, we accidentally reset everything. So the way I found to resolve this is fairly simple. We're going to add uh, another screen tap here. I'm then going to, not screen pan, 
screen tap. And then we're going to create an offset. And we're going to link this screen tap to the reset on this offset. I'm going to also add a runtime. So we're taking our runtime's uh, internal clock. And then I'm going to link this offset to a less than. Less than. Uh, so when this is less than 0 0.5, we want this to fire a pulse, not a value, a pulse. That's again going to flip a switch. So when our pulse is uh, on, it's going to turn on and then it'll turn off to turn off. We want to make sure we don't link these to the flip, link these to the on and offs accordingly. And then we just link this switch up to our enabled on our screen tap here. So now if I single screen tap, nothing will happen. But if I double screen tap, it will reset. And now I reduce the risk of me accidentally resetting everything by tapping the screen and missing the target, like so. And that is as far as we have got with this so far. Like I said, we will probably revisit this. Um, in fact, just one more thing to add before we finish, just um, because this is something that you'll find potentially on certain devices, is we may need to add a plane finder. So I'm just going to go to my plane tracker. And I'm just going to add that to my patch editor up here. And I'm going to select my main controller and visibility here. So this here will detect our plane and if a plane is found, like here where it says found, we want all everything that's pounded to it, so our targets and uh, the controller etc, all that to only become visible if a plane is found, otherwise it won't work. Now this does seem to work on some devices without this being included, but for better results I do find that actually having this in here will act as a kind of verifier essentially. And just to check that we haven't missed anything, I'm just going to quickly look at my other setup. And again, all this will be available to download in the description down below. And we will revisit this and looking at adding a JavaScript uh, score in the future, uh, possibly. And if you wanted to add things like sound triggers when you shoot a target or particle effects, just make sure that you add them to the appropriate target here. If your positions of your targets look a bit off, uh, just look, check your random values here um, and you don't necessarily have to do what I did here with adding and add a subtract. I could add two more randoms and just link them up like so. The reason I did this was more just to sort of show that you can link multiple um, targets up to the same one just using an offset to uh, adjust that without making it any more messy. So I could just have duplicated them without adding them in. Uh, if we ever wanted to adjust our timing, um, if we go back to our countdown here, if you remember, we in the, in the first part, we uh, added this multiply and divide. If we were to hook these up instead, so let's say I hook this up to my uh, round, like so, in between, uh, and I multiplied it by two, uh, so now we set. It will now uh, speed it up, so it's actually half my time. But if I wanted to make my time longer, I use a divide. And that will now, do, that will now um, basically uh, double my time. Now, if I'm doubling my time or halving my time, I will need to also adjust my values. So at the moment, you see I've doubled my value here. So I've, divide, so I've divided the number and times it by two. So instead of it being 18, this is now going to take 36 seconds. If I go back up here, the, you'll notice it's only starting halfway through. And what I need to do is I need to go to my countdown timer here and just change this value to be times two. So wherever we uh, divide our value by, if we're using that, we do need to also adjust our timer to compensate for that. So if we're increasing our time by dividing, then we also need to du increase, um, duplicate or increase our time here accordingly. So now this will take 36 seconds rather than 18 seconds. So this is how you can adjust time without adding more keyframes into your sequence. 
And likewise, we could do the same or reverse for speeding it up just half the value uh, instead of duplicating the value. Anyway, I hope this has been useful, at least a uh, starting point and give you some ideas of what you can kind of do with countdowns. Um, and like I said, uh, we'll put everything down in the description down below. And then to like, comment and subscribe. And I will see you again soon. Goodbye. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before you disappear, uh, just quickly a little amendment to this video. Now, uh, something I re was rec discovered whilst I was editing and working on this video um, before I finish it uh, is what if we wanted to say what in all three of these targets hit we wanted something to show. Now, I found a solution to this and I just want to add this in quickly. So where we've got all our object tabs here, you'll notice we've got these knots here. These are kind of our checkers. So if we were to drag from uh, our target knot gate here and add an and so when this target is hit, it's going to fire a signal here. Uh, and when this one is hit, it's going to fire a signal here. So only when these two signals are hit, will it send out a pulse. Uh, I'm just going to add one more and. So we're going to hook this third target up down here and then add this and to here. And what I've done is I've just quickly created a uh, another rectangle, uh, just filled it to the width of my uh, project and added some text uh, as a child of it. I could link the visibility of this up to this AND gate. So now when I reset, if I hit all three targets, and only when I hit all three targets, I should have the option, uh, like so, it'll tell me that I've hit all three targets and I've won. So this is a simple way of telling it that you've completed it and you've succeeded, and you could also have this trigger uh, sound or particle system uh, if you wanted to. So this is just a kind of little uh, addition that I just wanted to quickly throw in whilst I'm editing this video. Anyway, remember like, comment and subscribe. See you again soon. Blah blah blah. Goodbye.